the channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe but most people on here on Instagram know me as ZA Reptiles as you can see we're in the car today and I'm not filming with my camera I'm filming with my iPhone I fully intended to film with my camera but I forgot we were doing this little road trip straight from work today and I didn't bring my camera to work so it's just like the good old days I'm filming on my phone it is what it is this might just mean that I get this video up sooner because I can edit it on my phone and I have to put it on the computer and do like all the fancy schmancy stuff to it. So yes, we are in the car, which can only mean one thing. We're going to get a new animal. So if you've been following me on social media, you know I said I reached my cutoff. I was done until we got a house and I had a proper reptile room and I could build the new enclosures for my big boas and my big lizards, um, sneak peek, I guess, not really sneak peek, what's the word I'm looking for? Spoiler alert, there we go, that's the word. So spoiler alert, Arcadius, my green iguana, did get a bigger enclosure. So I was just really, really sick of waiting to build him a new enclosure because as he gets bigger, the bump in his back gets bigger and he already couldn't climb very well, but now with that bump being bigger, it really throws off his balance and he just, he can't climb well. And I've seen him take several tumbles in his current enclosure trying to climb down because it's just steep enough that he just, he tumbles. I knew I wanted his build to be really long as opposed to really tall, so that he had um, horizontal space to explore and work his muscles since he's not really climbing. Um, that way he also doesn't get very high off the ground, so should he fall, he doesn't have a long way down. So I ended up getting him a grow tent so that he could have something immediately, because I don't like sitting around waiting for stuff like that. So I got him a grow tent, and we moved him to my brother's room. My brother had a lot of empty spaces. He has the biggest bedroom. And I have the smallest bedroom with all my animals. Funny how that worked out. So he has the biggest bedroom. So he had a huge spot where we could fit a big grow tent for him. So that's been set up. My brother and I built a climbing structure for him that is very handicap friendly. So it's worked out really, really well for him. And I just, I really love it. So yes, there's my little um, current animal. I already forgot that word again. Spoiler alert, that's the word. I don't know why I can't remember that word today. I keep wanting to say sneak peek, but you guys aren't seeing anything. So there is no sneak peek. So anyway, back to the topic of discussion. Yes, I did say that I wasn't gonna get more animals until I had a house because I'm out of room and I wanted to build the upgrades and finish those before getting new animals, yada yada. Yes, I did say that, I know I said that. However, when you hear what this animal is and why we're getting it, it'll all make sense. So for those of you that are new here, I have two African fat-tailed geckos. So for those of you that aren't new here, you know I'm talking about Suki and Yue. And Suki, a lot of you know as my gecko with the bubble foot. So when I took these geckos in, she told me straight up, you know, the smaller of the two has a bubble foot. I don't know why. I've asked people, nobody really knows why. You know, we haven't seen any injuries. There's not really a stuck shed. So I asked her if they had ever seen a vet and she didn't really know that there were reptile vets or that there were reptile vets around here at least. So I told her that I, my plan was to get her into a reptile vet um, to take a look at her bubble foot so we could see what was going on. And so she asked me to keep her updated because you know she had them for a year. If you want to know the whole backstory on why she had them and how I got them and all that good old stuff, um, there is a video. I think this happened last summer. So if you go back to like last summer or last spring, somewhere around there, yeah, it was like last spring. So I've had him for almost a year now. Wow. Um, but yeah, so if you go back to like last spring, you'll see the Meet My Fat Tail Gecko video and I'd tell you everything there. So she asked me for an update. Of course, this was like close to the start of COVID. So all of the vets were either closed or not taking new patients. So 
unfortunately I wasn't able to get Suki in for quite a while. Last fall though, I was finally able to get her in um, to the vet that we take our turtles to for work. So I brought the turtles up. We needed a couple beak trims. I brought the turtles up and brought Suki with me and she was able to get her right in with the turtles. Um, took a look at her. She said it was probably a fatty mass or a benign tumor. So nothing that needed to really be taken care of. Um, she said it would be more risky to take care of it because we'd have to put her under anesthesia and go under surgery and without knowing exactly for sure what it is and with her being so small, anesthesia would be extremely dangerous for her. So I texted her and gave her that update because you know she had asked me to keep her updated because this bubble foot was a huge mystery. And you guys know back in December, I upgraded them and they got a three by two foot enclosure. So it's really, really big enclosure with live plants and substrate and quark bark. And I really love how it turned out. And she had asked me, cause she knew that I was working on that. She asked me when it was done to send her a picture of it. Now mind you, I got them in a 10 gallon tank. So this was a huge moment for them getting this enclosure. So I totally forgot because if you guys were around that time, it was very stressful getting those new setups done because they came like two months late and they came like a week before Christmas. So I was trying to put these enclosures together and do the backgrounds and get them all finished like a week before Christmas. So I totally forgot to send her pictures. So I finally did last week. I sent her pictures, said, you know, sorry, I totally forgot. Um, but hey, this is how it turned out. This is what it looks like. And she was so impressed and so grateful that I had been keeping her updated on the animals, on the geckos, that she asked me if I would consider taking her gargoyle gecko. So you guys may have already known what animal we were going to get. I haven't quite decided if I'm putting it in the title of this video or not. Um, so you might already know if I decide to put it in the title, otherwise surprise, we're going out to get a gargoyle gecko. So if you don't know much about gargoyle geckos, they're kind of like crested geckos in their care. So they're not, it's not gonna add on anything really to my care routine. It's not a very high maintenance animal. So this is an animal, and it's, they're decently small. So not a huge amount of space. So this is an animal that I can totally take on right now without a problem. Um, anything bigger, I would have to say no. But because it's a gargoyle gecko, I can totally manage that right now. Um, also, you guys know I have a list going of education animals that I want for my future education programs. I did make a rule for myself probably, I don't know, two years ago now that I was going to stop getting animals that couldn't be used for education and only take on animals that could also double as ambassador animals. That way the work I'm putting into my animals is just another part of the job and it all circles back to you know the education programs. So I don't want to say like my animals are making me money, but I mean if we dumbed it down and made it real simple, that's what it would come down to is my animals are my ambassadors for my programs, which would give me another source of income. So, so someday when I've got a house and I'm properly adulting and I've got good sources of income coming in, there are obviously animals I still want that could not be used as education animals, like a blue tree monitor is one of my dream lizards, but that is not one that I'd get for education purposes. It's not one that I'd get anytime soon. I love geckos for programs, especially with young kids, because they're not intimidating. They're very cute. And so crested geckos are great education animals, but the issue I have with them is that they're so common in the pet trade that everybody knows what a crested gecko is. Everyone has seen a crested gecko. So they're not really unique and special. I don't wanna say they're not special. I love crested geckos, but they're not like super unique and super cool. Like when you go to an education program and you're paying someone to come show you cool animals and they show up with an animal you can go see for free at PetSmart. Not as exciting. So I really want more gecko-like animals. 
uh, especially like a crested gecko that could be used for education. So a gargoyle has always been on my list. So yes, this woman asked me if I would take her um, gargoyle gecko. She said she's one of her favorites, um, but you know, she saw the care that I gave to the fat tails. I was very impressed and very grateful that I kept her updated all this time. So she just thought that the gargoyle would live a better life if she came and lived with me. Um, so I wasn't gonna argue. You know, she told me that, you know, there was no rehoming fee. Clearly, I could be trusted and I gave great care to the animals and I keep her updated. So she was willing to just give me the gargoyle gecko. Um, catch being that I have to drive out there and get it. So luckily it's only a 45 minute drive. Um, I did leave work early, an hour early, so that I'm not spending my whole evening driving to go get this gecko because I have other things I have to do tonight. Yes, yeah, so it's an adult female. Uh, she said she didn't know the sex when I talked to her last week, but then she texted me the other morning and said, surprise, I just woke up and found eggs in her enclosure. So she's a female. So yes, I have an adult female who just recently laid eggs, <laughs> non-fertile eggs. So I came up with a name. I'm trying to decide if I want to stick to the pea theme because like my geckos are pip and potato. So I kind of think that I might want to stick to like a pea theme, but I don't know. At the yet. next stop sign, turn right. I had all like like arboreal geckos eventually like I want a lychee um and I want some leaf tails leaf tails are my absolute favorites I would die to have leaf tails and I don't even know what species because I love them all so I don't know if I want them all to have pea names and like be matchy matchy but pip and potato at the stop really sign cute. turn right onto state route 37 All right, so enough rambling. I know people hate when I sit and like talk at you guys. I don't like when people, I don't like watching videos where people sit and talk at me either. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording and I'll see you guys when we pick up the gecko. They're here. Where is this guy going? I'm over here. Come this way. Why are you over there? I told them where my car was. I don't know why he's driving around like he can't find my car. Apparently she's not with him, it's just the husband. So, now where did he go? He looks super confused. He totally just went back the wrong direction. We're doing a U-turn, okay? He's doing a U-turn. I really hope she like touched base with him and told him where I was parked. Cause this guy is driving around in circles. Okay, here he comes again. Is he finally coming this way? Oh, I think he finally found me. I think he's coming this way. Okay, I think we're good. We're good, you guys, we're good. One of these days, I'm gonna get smart again and I'm gonna remember to bring travel containers for animals so I don't have to travel with them in tanks. But I keep forgetting, but we got her. So I'm not even going to attempt to show you guys her until I get home. But here's our enclosure. Um, so it looks like a 20 gallon tall. She's hiding in the front corner. So I already looked at her. Nice big, she's very pretty. Um, lots of foliage, but yes, it's gonna have to be cleaned out. And she did tell me that I have to clean it all out, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, we got her. Let's take her home. All right, we just got home. I'm gonna move her into this bin. It's the first one I could grab. Take that out, that's useless. Um, so first bin I can grab, or move her in. I think I have a 20 gallon long upstairs, so we're gonna set that up for her because this, I'm not dealing with this. So we're gonna move her into here. They told me she's got a good temperament and she doesn't bite and she's always handled. So, time to test it out. Oh, it's taped shut. You're okay. Come here. Oh, you are so nice. You are just so nice. You're so polite and you're so pretty. You're much prettier in person. You're gonna wrap your tail around me. Okay, so here she is, much prettier in person. 
looks like we may have something going on on top of the head. It might just be some stuck shed. Um, but overall, looks pretty good. Very nice, very polite. So we're gonna get her inside. Look how politely she's just sitting up there. So cute. So I couldn't find the 20 gallon tank that's been sitting in my hallway forever, so I quickly grabbed this tank and set it up, but I have since found the 20 gallon, so we will be resetting it up for her. So this is what I've got so far. Not fantastic. You know, I didn't realize that I didn't really have much. I thought I had another bamboo bar. I forgot it broke, so I actually threw it away. Um, I've got more of the stick-on plants, so I just have to go get them, but I wanted to go ahead and get her in here ASAP Rocky. Um, I did give her a tub of dirt because she did lay eggs the other day. So I wanted to give her somewhere she could do it if she, for some reason, wanted to lay more. But yeah, so here she is. She's got super purple eyes. I hope the camera's picking it up because they're super pretty. But what do you think? You want to go in? Here you go. Go on in. Here you go. There you go. I just want to quickly reiterate that she will not be staying in this enclosure. She'll be going into a 20 gallon long, turned sideways, of course. Um, I had it in my hallway for the longest time, and then, of course, when I went to set it up for her, I couldn't find it. So I just grabbed this enclosure so that I could put her and do something. And this enclosure is very wide, so I do not have the things to fill it easily like I would for a tall and skinny enclosure. I did find the 20 gallon tall the next morning, so I will be moving her into that. So yes, I know it looks bare and kind of empty and not that great. I'm aware she'll be moving into a 20 gallon tall, well, long, turn sideways, now that I have figured out where the heck it went. All right, moving on. So next day, I look pretty gross. I just came out of the depths of the basement. I've been working on the sweatshirts for Etsy that I sold or I had the sale a couple weeks ago um, so they're now done I have to ship them out tomorrow so I've been busy doing that all day I still have to work out and then I have to go to the rink and skate so I just feel and look gross but it is what it is so I'm stuck between two names Vesta and Tula so let me know in the description below what you think would be a better name for her Vesta or Tula I was stuck between Binks Echo Vesta and Tula but Binks and Echo I feel like are used enough and Vesta and Tula just gave me a little bit more like feminine vibes and I really like that for her since she's like super cute and has purple eyes and everything. So Vesta or Tula, let me know in the comments below what you think. And yeah, so today's just a quick little short video, nothing too crazy. Um, so yeah, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you for the next video. Bye.